Wait a sec, how do we get here? Let's rewind and go back to when the first Castle Park project began, in the year 1988. and I was lucky enough to be part of the first Carlisle Castle build in 1988 and um, I uh, shoveled a lot of pea stone. There was pea stone buckets and brigades and it was kind of heavy lifting but you know that many years ago I could do it so my husband was in one of the um, tool people. He and another guy um, passed out tools and took um, care to make sure tools got returned, etc. And even my children were involved. They were six and seven at the time, but they, they washed tires um, and carried buckets. And this year, because of age, uh, I decided that I couldn't do the heavy lifting, but I would be happy to do uh, something uh, that was a little less uh, physical. And so I checked people in and um, had them sign waivers to participate for their different jobs on the playground. Back in 1988, the um, we had some help from um, uh, a group from Fort Devens. 22 men came and boy, they, they, they did a lot. They did a lot of the heavy lifting. But in this case, it was tearing down a playground and starting again. So it was very different in terms of scope. Also, I believe this is the largest playground that Play for Build has built um, of all the playgrounds that they've built. I really think that uh, Carlisle is a small town and uh, we don't have a community center. Uh, we have two acre zoning. Sometimes people don't know their neighbors or the people down the road. But an event like this, and back in 1988, really brought the whole community together, young and old. Uh, it was a really interesting way to meet new people and new friends. And this was remarked upon several times back in 1988. As a matter of fact, that was one, um, one of the participants in that build uh, spoke to that fact that, you know, this was an opportunity to meet people that were your neighbors that you hadn't met before. For the community as it is for the kids in the school, it's just really something real nice for the community. It turned out to be like a, a barn raising. You see a lot of neighbors you never see during the year and you do a lot of things you've never done during the year with them. And, been a lot of fun. So it's a really bonding experience, but it also is something that was very important to the community. The Carlisle School um, was basically it. You knew um, your uh, children's uh, parents and you became friends with them. And also, uh, the sense of community is really important. Um, and it's the same this year when we did uh, the second castle. There were people of all generations, lots of grandparents. Many are still here in town and they were part of the first build as well. And some of their children, uh, some of their grandchildren are in the Carlisle School now. We had a playground structure that wasn't open to all of our students. Um, kindergartners and preschool were not allowed to be on the old castle. And also we had some students with physical disabilities that were not able to use the playground. So to create a playground for all ages and for all children um, was really something that we wanted for this community. There was a group of us that sat on the school advisory council and under the leadership of uh, Principal Seidel, who's the elementary school principal, had been trying to get this project underway for um, a few years now. And we spun off as a group of um, seven of us who took on the project of fundraising over the course of just under a year for the castle and then ultimately doing the castle build uh, this past September. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this is my 11th year here and Miss Venaria, who is a second grade teacher and I had tried to get the ball rolling for a new playground four different times. Um, and we were meeting with a new um, school advisory team. And so we brought the idea forward. Brian was there, Jen, um, Linda and Carrie, all people who were part of our core group. We introduced it. They said, yes, let's go. Um, soon after our PTO president, Deepa joined us and she was a big fundraiser. And then Scott Jamison, who was actually in charge of getting all the volunteers, jumped on the committee. So we formed the committee quickly. Um, and once that happened, the ball just rolled really quickly because these people were go-getters and talented. And so we went out to the school committee, we went out to the town, and really in many towns, anything of this size takes years to build. We did it in less than a year and a half, and that was due to these, these parents that were on this committee. Um, and so there were many aspects. One of the aspects were these tiles that we added. Rachel Levy, our art teacher, um, really helped design and look at them and what we were doing. And every child from preschool through fourth grade created a tile um, so that they are part of the playground even before it opened. have more than 300 volunteers on a daily basis uh, there there is less than that but we hope to get about 80 volunteers um, each day we have people running food for us we have people running a tool shed for us uh, we have safety people and check-in people uh, we have childcare in the morning and in the afternoon. In the very beginning, we looked for designers. We actually started with the company who designed this, the first playground, and we met with several other companies. Uh, we settled on Play, Play by Design. Uh, they're a wonderful company. They're here on site now, and we've been meeting with them to help us design this new castle. I'll tell you one thing about my experience doing community builds is you have an opportunity to meet special people that really are willing to sacrifice to create something, creating a little, creating a little history in their community. And Carlisle so far has been incredible. Uh, we had our first phase and what I think stands Carlisle apart is the fact that we had a lot of obstacles to start with. We had, you know, two weeks of time with a week in between for us to actually erect this amazing playground, uh, one board at a time. There was prefab work that was happening. There was hole digging and cement uh, that was happening on the site. Uh, Deepa Chungi was the um, fundraiser on the project and uh, I made, I think I made one of the initial donations and Deepa had mentioned that they needed a construction coordinator and I don't have construction experience, at least in playgrounds or buildings, uh, but I have software construction experience and it's very parallel and so I agreed to do it and you know it's been a learning experience obviously to manage all the site logistics and whatnot, but it's really fun. Probably for the last six or seven months, we've been prepping, and that's been my main job, is to recruit about 20 crew leaders uh, who are here, all leading the volunteers on little parts of the job. Um, get all the site logistics, you know, fence it off, make sure our deliveries are on time, tents up, you know, there's a hundred other things. And then manage all the deliveries, uh, manage all the the site preparation, we had to remove the old playground. Uh, we took down a kindergarten playground and kept it intact so we could move it to another location. There was a lot of things like that. And it was really, you know, all volunteers really that came out and, you know, the town has been so great coming out to help. The best part about this is the whole community's coming together 
and they're all getting to know their neighbors and their friends and you know they're making new friends right so i think a lot of these volunteers didn't even realize that to be someone two straights over you know they had so much in common with and now they're working side by side so and that's why we did it by the way as a community playground is you know we could have paid somebody to make a playground for us we wanted to do a community playground so that it's really a, a community experience where we all feel ownership over it and we make new friends, etc. So that's why we're doing it. So I actually was a volunteer early on and I um, had an interesting experience. I was coming out of a voting, uh, the voting polls and uh, someone approached me and, and gave me a flyer. And uh, that's really the first that I learned about this particular community build playground project. And it sounded like a great opportunity for, for me specifically to pay forward some of the things that as a family we enjoyed. We had the opportunity to raise four kids here. Um, we moved into Carlisle just as the uh, playground was already built. Uh, so I raised four kids, and when this opportunity popped up, I, I jumped on it. And my specific role was as a crew lead, which could mean a lot of different things. And one of it, which was we had so many volunteers and maybe about 15, possibly 20 crew leads, we would take uh, groups of, of volunteers and work together with specific projects that the, the, the leaders of the project would divide up so that we would have uh, a lot of people working simultaneously at different parts around the whole playground. Hey, I'm Bill Brady. I'm a local Carlisle resident and I volunteered for the Carlisle Castle Playground Project and my role was a uh, crew leader. Um, primarily I worked in the cutting tent where we took the 16 foot dimensional lumber and milled it and cut it and massaged it into all the pieces that you see in the playground behind you. It really turned out to be a great opportunity to, of course, come and help build this for present and future kids that are going to play on this playground. My family spent a lot of time here over the years, and I think it's great that these kids and the community at large really is going to have a, um, you know, a safe and beautiful place to just make future memories. So we um, started seeding the volunteer process as we were fundraising. We said, you know, this is phase one. The fundraising is just the part one. And then after we raise the funds, we have to all build the castle. The same energy we need for fundraising, we need for building. So people knew it was going to be a community build. Um, September is tough because everyone leaves in August. But uh, we got the word out on City in the Woods. We had Facebook. We used the school uh, principals got the word out as well. and. But what worked the most was when friends told friends and neighbors, they're building the castle, come build a castle with me. That got so many people out of the woodwork. If you had high schoolers, if you had college kids and you're kind of not tapped into the school community, uh, they're like, oh, I can do that. Or, oh, I remember the castle. I'd love to help. Or some people were like, I was here when the 1988 castle went up. I want to be a part of this other build because it was so amazing. So. Word of mouth was really our best, uh, our best bet for getting all these volunteers. We have, um, we have probably about 50 volunteers for each shift. Um, some people stay, they come in the morning and then they just stay all day. Uh, we had a lot of people yesterday who came for one shift and then was like, I think I can take tomorrow off and come back and they're back today. So we need about 80 per shift. So we're still a little lower than what we need right now as we start, but hopefully that'll pick up as people kind of see and get excited about what's happening here at the castle. I've been doing this, I said, 29 years, quite close to, I would say, four to 500 playgrounds. The biggest playground I've ever built was in Texas, obviously, uh, 22,000 square feet. But this is 28,000 square feet. Uh, so this is, just, I would almost, I would guess that this is probably the biggest playground in the state of Massachusetts and one of the top in the country. I just want to hit home the, the thanks to the community piece. I mean, this literally could not have happened. It was a big endeavor, and I don't think everybody had a full sense of what the scope was going to be like. 
until they came here and participated in the build, they didn't realize how much help was needed and people just showed up. People came for maybe one shift and then ended up staying longer or signing up for multiple shifts when they saw what they were actually a part of. And that was a beautiful thing. I think it was so nice to see people um, realize that they were a part of something bigger and recognize the need and want to be a part of it. So my biggest takeaway is just making sure that the community knows how much we appreciate them for coming out and making this possible because it wouldn't have happened without everybody pitching in. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, so before we let everyone in, just a little history. December 2020, middle of COVID, Dennett and I were talking about what we wanted to do with the School Advisory Council. And he said, I have a project I've been thinking about for a few years. That January 13th, we talked to the School Advisory Council about it. They gave us the green light 620 days ago to start to think about how we might reimagine the castle. And our first meeting was a couple weeks later, February 2021. It started with a small group and it grew. We have Jen Kaczynski, Dr. Seidel, Deepa Chungi, Scott Jamison, Linda Benaria, and Carrie Patel. And if you don't know me, I'm Brian Watterson. We met almost every Friday afternoon from February 2021 until just a couple weeks ago. However, we would not have done this without the community. Last November, when we showed you the design and we said we needed to raise a million dollars by the 1st of March, the community responded. Yeah. Yeah. In, town, in town meeting, when we asked for additional funding, it passed unanimously. And of course, none of this would happen without the volunteers. Our crew leads. Yeah. Our leads on food, tools, and childcare. Yeah. And the members of the community who came day after day to help us build. Yeah. And last but not least, the alumni of the 1988 build. During this build, we had people come from across the street and as far as Austria. Thank you all and give yourselves a round of applause. When I moved to Carlisle six years ago, I was really excited to see the type of playground that was here. Uh, the old wooden structure was something that was very familiar from my childhood, uh, but at the same time, I also saw the need to modernize it. Uh, having three young daughters in the school system, I'm very excited to have a playground that they can all enjoy uh, for their time in Carlisle, as well as all their friends um, and for children for many years to come. I'm just amazed at everything. And while I was checking people in, I couldn't always see exactly what was happening. So even sitting here now, I'm seeing things that I did not see during the actual build. But um, I just think the um, the fact that there's kind of a an older kid part and a younger kid part, I think that's pretty important because after school and during the summer when school's not in session, there will be families that have maybe a seven-year-old and a three-year-old so that they can still be um, enjoying the um, parts of the playground that are age appropriate. 